right, Five Nights at Freddy's fans, your boy has just finished reading the first story in the brand new Five Nights at Freddy's Tales of the Pizza Plex book, which just came out, and it appears to be going for the same type of feel with this new series as the one that came before, Fazbear Frights, where we get one story that actually is three different short horror stories that take place within the Five Nights at Freddy's world. With that being said, let's take a look at the first story, Creality, shall we? The main character of this story is Jessica. She is described as being quite a strange girl. In fact, most of the kids at school think that she's creepy and weird, with a lot of girls even calling her the zombie girl. She keeps to herself and she likes peace and quiet. As much as people make fun of her, she feels like she deserves this ridicule for something that happened to her long ago, which led to her being on the current road she's on. A very dark, lonely, and somber road, that is. She dedicates most of her life to trying to help the sick children in the hospital that she works at. She works as a janitor, and she tries to help the kids as much as possible. And she does this in a very specific way using a heart-shaped pendant, very similar to the heart-shaped pendant given to Sarah by Eleanor in To Be Beautiful, a story featured in the Fazbear Frights book series that came before this one. And the way that Jessica uses this pendant is by scraping and shaving down the metal that makes up the pendant. And apparently, when these metal flakes hit the child, or land on the child, for some miraculous reason, their ailment is healed and they start to feel better. Reason for this most likely is that this pendant might have some remnant inside of it, which gives it the magical powers to heal people. And that's why whenever Jessica whittles the little heart-shaped pendant, the metal that falls onto the children makes them feel better and heals them. And when it comes to Jessica's backstory, not much is known. Jessica never wants to talk about her backstory or her past. The only thing she does say is that she made a mistake which led her down the road she is currently on. Unable to get back to the way things used to be when she was normal. She simply just exists. And the story never makes any effort to explain why she simply just exists. She lives at a local cemetery inside one of the crypts, and that's where she spends her nights when she's not working or at school. She actively avoids making friends and likes the quiet and peacefulness of her crypt in the graveyard, as well as her night shift at the hospital. She pretty much likes to remain invisible, as she puts it. However, things get very different when she starts opening up to one of her co-workers, a nurse that works at the hospital, taking care of the children, as well as she meets a new transfer student named Robert, who is partnered up with her at school to work on a project where they build their own mini robot together, and the robot can't be made out of store-bought pieces, or at least they have to try to avoid buying as many store-bought pieces as possible. It's mostly a salvage operation, references to the pizzeria simulator. The cute thing about it is that Nurse Macy and Robert actually helped Jessica to come back from this dark uh, moment in her life where she's just kind of, her only concern is about everybody else around her and not herself. In fact, she continually tells herself that she doesn't deserve nice things and that she only has one set of mind and that is to help people and everything like that. So it's nice to see the character actually have a bit of happiness and clarity for once. She goes to prom with this boy she meets and her, uh, her colleague, Nurse Macy, actually helps her to pick up an outfit for her, uh, for her date and it's really cute. However, because this is a Five Nights at Freddy's story, things go wrong, and every time she whittles her little, uh, her little heart pendant, she slowly and slowly starts to feel sicker 
and more fatigue, she becomes weaker and weaker. And one day when she's at her prom with Robert, she's super happy, she's excited, she's finally taking back her life, making some time for herself. It starts. Robert kisses her and he gets a big wad of grease rust in his mouth he's all you gross you're you're disgusting get away from me and she looks and grease is pouring out of her mouth she runs back to work to see nurse macy and she's just got grease running down her face her skin looks more metallic she runs into uh, a uh, hospital room where a sick patient is and she helps to heal that patient by using the last bit of her heart Pendant to help this kid out as she is dying and after that she is reduced to a pile of scraps rusted metal and oil her nurse is confused and to some degree sad and the priest that she commonly went to go and visit during her lunch breaks goes down kneels at the site of where all of these um, metal you know scraps are and thinks to himself and it's made clear the way it's written that he knew exactly what happened but he never said anything and that's how the story ends a very similar ending to to be beautiful where uh sarah was you know turned into this mechanical mess of parts and this is inevitably what happened to jessica in the end of the story which is really sad because i really liked her character and that's it the story ends like that a broken girl finally getting her life back only to be turned into a pile of junk and scrap metal. I really like this story. Now for it being a Five Nights at Freddy's security breach story, it really had nothing to do with the Mega Pizza Plex. In fact, the Mega Pizza Plex was only brought up once in the story and it was referenced by a grieving family as they are visiting with their sick son and they're saying when you get home we'll buy you your favorite pizza from Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex. That's the only time Security Breach is brought up in the story. Now I liked the story. I thought it was great. I thought it was fun and I loved it. The character of Jessica was well written and I loved the mysteriousness behind her character. However, there really wasn't enough there to suggest it's a Five Nights at Freddy's story. In fact, if I picked up just this story at, say, Cole's Bookstore or Chapters, and it didn't have anything to do with Five Nights at Freddy's, I would have probably still enjoyed it. But the fact that this was included in a Five Nights at Freddy's book, and there's only one reference to Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex in the whole story, is kind of lackluster. But nonetheless, I still enjoyed it. It was a good story, and I liked everything about it. However, going into this, I would expect there to be animatronic terror, or have there at least be a scenario where the character goes to the Mega Pizza Plex instead of having the whole story take place inside of a hospital or in a school or in a cemetery crypt. Anyway, I'm hoping the next story will have more to do with the Mega Pizza Plex Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, as that's literally what this new book series is being marketed as. It's a series of stories that are themed around the Mega Pizza Plex in Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. So let's hope that Lally's game is a little bit better when it comes to Five Nights at Freddy's stuff. But that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you enjoyed this story or if you thought it was a bit lame when it comes to Five Nights at Freddy's. Let me know all this in the comments below. And with that being said, do take care, have a great night, and I'll see ya in the next video.